morning everyone welcome back to another video my name is Jan Kjellstra today we're feeding cows and later this afternoon we're going to be baling straw out in the field we're currently baling pea straw so uh gonna get the cows fed this morning we got the first milk cow load in the wagon it's just mixing and we'll go drop it in our freestyle barn Finished feeding cows this morning at the farm and this afternoon now we're out in the field got two balers going I'm in our case setup and my sister Nalene she's running the New Holland balers somewhere on that side of the field this is pea straw we've already baled probably three quarters of it it all had rain on it now that's fine it's just for bedding if we need it in years to come, we're kind of making a bunch of extra straw just because we have it now. But uh, this will get parked on the yard somewhere. And if we need in another drought year, we'll still have some of this stuff sitting around. Should end up with 700 bales from this year of just pea straw. So it all adds up. We'll take this, we'll take the barley, take the fall rye, take the canola. And then you end up with a bunch of bales for enough for uh, a couple of years on the farm. Anyway, we're gonna keep bailing away here. It is super chopped up. And that's just because we combined the peas when it was really, really dry. Honestly, we I think we waited a little bit too long to come in here with the combine. Peas were shelling on the ground a bit and that results in the straw also being chopped up. So it's really short, fine, chopped up straw. And that makes bailing a little difficult. So struggling with that a little bit, but otherwise it's going pretty good. Got two balers running for the first time again in uh, probably a week. These things have uh, been a bit of a struggle to keep going. Brent's just been fixing bearing after bearing on these balers, trying to get both of them going at the same time. And uh, we're finally getting close to the combine. He's in the next field. So we finished these two quarters of peas and then he went to the next field right away and that is barley. So uh, yeah, we're, we're starting to catch up to the combine again. We have not caught up to them since we uh, got into that fall rye. The swaths on that hybrid field were just so big and we were just crawling over them with that uh, baler. So it took a long time, but that's bailed now. And he's on the horizon, so we're gonna try catch him today. Been bailing it for about an hour this afternoon so far. And I noticed one of our bales here, actually two in this row, it's only half wrapped, so. This happens occasionally. It happens with both balers, actually, the New Holland and the Case baler. They are identical balers, but that just uh, happens because the net wrap goes around one of the rolls on the inside of the baler. So uh, all I gotta do is splice that net wrap out, pull it out, and then it should be good. Of course, the first thing I did was put the safety on for the door because I am gonna be crawling in there to do so. That just will make it less likely that the door shuts on me when I do crawl in there. So the reason why that can happen, the net wrap will just get caught on one of these rollers here. There's some bars on here that are welded on just to give it some grip. Uh, maybe there's a little piece of steel that's sticking out, a little sharp piece. Whatever happens, it hooks on there, wraps around once, and then it grips it. And then it goes on here. Instead of where it's supposed to be going, on the bale wrapping it, and you get a few broken bales I am usually able to still get those on the bale wagon though when I'm picking bales. 
and bring it back to the yard. And then we shred them into the krills anyway, so. It is something with these balers though, that does happen every, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed to see that happen at least once every 200 bales or so. Which if you're making a few thousand is too often in my mind, but oh well. Yesterday we were combining barley, everything was going smooth, perfect day to be out in the fields. And then our combine, the tire, it just started bubbling up on Brent and uh, it got bigger and bigger and bigger, but uh, it eventually popped. So luckily it didn't completely blow these tires. Apparently they can blow up and just shred the whole side of the combine off. And uh, ours kind of just pinholed and dumped a bunch of air out and they were able to get some blocks underneath it. And then, uh, yeah, let some more air out. It didn't completely go. So, uh, tire, it's shot though. So we have to buy a new tire, which really sucks. Uh, the cost on these tires, they're Trela Borgs, which are supposed to be really good tires. And these were good tires. They're originals on the combine. They're 12 years old, so. Can't expect much more out of a tire these days than that, but uh, the replacement cost on the tire you guys are gonna see here is 10 grand, $10,000 for a single piece of rubber. Man, that's it's pretty heartbreaking. Not really anything we can do. We're just buying the same tire again and uh, putting it on. Got it through Wheatland Tractor here in the town of Asquith. They did hook us up with a pretty good deal, so they're always worth checking out. Anyway, we're gonna pull up on the combine here, and there's a guy following me. He is from a tire shop, so kind of expected him to bring a bigger truck with a crane maybe, but uh, I guess he didn't fully understand what this job entailed. Anyway, it's this tire right here. So we dropped the header off take some weight off of it and they blocked it up before it completely blew. You can see there's a whole flap of tire loose here. So. So this is a new tire. Nick just dropped it off. The tire guy should be back any minute to put it on. It's the exact same tire, Trailer Borg. Expensive bugger. So the new tires on the combine, it's the one you're looking at there. And that's the old one. Doesn't look any different 
I was kind of worried like oh it's gonna look like you have a brand new tire and an old tire on the combine but it's almost not even noticeable uh, it just sucks just unnecessary cost you know but that's always the case when you're running equipment so anyway he's gonna pick up that draper head and get going okay that combine is threshing again it's going in the field so that is good that is main priority as soon as the crop is ready to harvest you got to stay on it until it's in the bin don't leave a minute of potential harvest time on the table you go 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 so now that that's going i'm gonna try and get these balers going again got the case set up here the new holland's over there uh, that one's only been run for like two hours since the last service but this one's been more like eight or nine so gonna blow out the rad grease the baler and get this thing ready to go almost out of net wrap on this one but we got a spare roll in the back here so get our portable air compressor going it's the only piece of john deere equipment we got on the farm it's because we need it to actually work <laughs> let's see if we can get her going in one pull here Ooh, close 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 there we It is the next day now and last night I finished baling this pea straw field so we are all done baling the pea straw. We got a total of 711 bales from these two quarter sections so 320 acres 711 bales pretty good. Uh, we're stoked about that just continuously adding bales. We've got the both balers here. I'm going to do a quick service on the case one right here. This one was not run yesterday at all so she's good to go. And then we are gonna have to bale this whole field today. This is barley stubble. That was the next crop we went to. Combine is sitting out over there. So I don't think they're done combining this field yet. Maybe we can catch them today if we get these two going good. Okay, she's all fueled up and serviced, ready to go for another day. Let's check out the straw over here, see how dry it is. There's quite a bit of dew overnight but it's already windy and sunny, so it'll dry quick. I think that's still on the tough side, but uh, give it a couple hours, she'll be ready to go. Just grabbing some rolls and net wrap to take along to the field. I wanna show you guys, this is uh, our second pallet of net wrap that we've been using and we're for sure gonna need another one yet, so. If we're using a lot of these, it means we're making a lot of bales, which is a good thing. These are the dividers between the rows, so there's quite a few of those lying around. Me and Miriam are going to head out to the field now and get baling. Just had lunch, came back out to the field, and over lunch, some gnarly smoke rolled in. Must be a fire pretty close by because this is pretty thick. Still nothing we have to worry about, but it's definitely keeping the temperature down a little bit, which I don't mind, but obviously it sucks if someone has something burning down. Anyway, Miriam's going in the field again. We're gonna get going in this baler.
We're just bailing away and uh, Miriam's having some issues here. That's not how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, I know. What happened? Uh, it told me to kick out like normal. Like it went wrapped it and then it just exploded, I guess. Oh well. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. What the heck, eh? Making some good progress though. I don't think we'll be able to finish it. It's too green. Too green. So that stuff just got finished combining today. We were leaving the swaths on the ground for a day at least so it could dry out a little extra. Just because some of the plants were still green. Now we're making a bit of a mess out here. There's a few bales that aren't fully wrapped and so we're at our other yard right now and there's something pretty cool about this. We're filling bins here. Uh, we only use these bins when we have enough grain to fill them obviously. And there hasn't been grain in here for I think four years in any of these bins. So uh, pretty awesome that we're filling them again. I'm just gonna move the auger here this evening to the bin at the end there. It's a 3000 bushel bin. I think these are all two or 2200. Get this sucker moved over. We're probably gonna have to start filling some of those flat bottom bins over there as well. There's a bunch on the other side of the trees there. I think there's 10 or so. Maybe we'll have to fill those with some barley. Sucks to clean out, but man, are we gonna be stoked to fill those. Got it moved over. So these are the other bins we could potentially use if we needed more storage. The only downside is they're flat bottoms and they don't have an unload. So that means they need to be scooped out, 